Hey guys, what's going on? Wayne here. You know, for a while now, at least since the advent of grade control to the construction industry, the promise of machine automation, machines either semi-autonomously or fully autonomously running by themselves has kind of hung ominously over the construction industry. You know, there are some out there that kind of see it as you know, bringing the possibility of increased production efficiencies or a badly needed solution to the ever shrinking pool of skilled labor, while others kind of see it as maybe even more importantly leading to even safer job sites. And look, while some in the industry are a bit more skeptical of the technology and its impact, it's it's clear at this point that automation in some form or fashion will have a large part to play in the future of construction. And that's because robotics has and will continue to play a huge role in the manufacturing industry. And it's now poised to gain a foothold in other industries such as hospitality and restaurants that heretofore, at least before the pandemic happened, were unaffected by serious labor shortages. In fact, Caterpillar has heard from customers that have put semi-autonomous and autonomous equipment to work that these technologies are actually expanding the labor pool that they can draw from. And it allows people to work with equipment, to operate equipment, that might not be able to otherwise, for example, those with disabilities. And look, there are several factors, both internal and external to the construction industry to credit with automation's quickening pace. Now, for starters, there's the huge growth that we've seen over the last decade or so in the overall kind of consumer comfort with technology in our daily lives. And of course, there's the billions of dollars being spent every year by automotive companies to make cars fully self-driving. But if you want an example of just how real the move toward automation and construction has gotten, look no further than Caterpillar, who recently gave me the opportunity to get an early look at its very first semi-autonomous compact machine, a 299D3 with a new autonomous layer atop the established Cat Command remote control technology. Co-starring with a CAT 794 AC electric drive autonomous mine truck, this machine made its official debut in the latest CAT trial video, No Hands. Now, if you haven't seen that already, be sure to check it out. But if you want to know how this thing works, why it exists, and what it means for the future of the construction industry, let's talk. So I think the first thing that we need to get out of the way here is that CAT didn't develop a whole new machine that is purpose-built to be autonomous. They basically just developed a brain and eyes. Now, as you can see here in this footage, the brain that we're talking about is actually an add-on roof rack, very similar to the CAT command module that the company announced in January of this year that enables remote control for all of the D3 CTL models. So basically everything, all the hardware like LiDAR and cameras for this machine that allow it to see and make sense of the world around it is contained right up there in this roof rack. Now, Kat says the roof rack requires almost no mods of the base machine to be installed, and it can attach in less than a day. And look, given where we're at in terms of the evolution of autonomous equipment, this pin on roof rack is a pretty smart solution on Caterpillar's part. Because look, the cost of prepping a supply chain, prepping a manufacturing facility, and a whole manufacturing line to build purpose-built autonomous machines, machines with integrated, you know, fully autonomous or semi-autonomous technology with the LiDAR and cameras, everything built in from the factory, the cost of doing that would be vast. It would take a long time to get that whole manufacturing process spun up. So what they've come up with is basically a non-destructive, easy to install solution that you know delivers this technology precisely to the customers who want it on precisely the machines that they want it installed on. Now look, I mentioned earlier that the autonomous hardware that you see here is based heavily on CAT's command remote control kit for CTLs. In fact, CAT says this hardware actually allows customers to remove or add layers of autonomous technology as needed. Now, at the foundation of this ability to layer technology, obviously, is the machine itself. In this case, a D3 series CTL that any operator can still open the door up, hop inside and operate like a normal machine. But where basically the layering starts is when you add on this roof rack. And initially, that roof rack adds the ability to remote control the machine. Basically, whenever you're in an unsafe spot or you need to operate the CTL remotely, you can hop out within line of sight, you can grab the remote control panel and operate this thing remotely. But the new addition is the addition of the LiDAR and the, all the camera systems that enable this machine to basically drive itself. In other words, this machine is basically a host. It has no idea that it's an autonomous machine. 
It's just looking for operator input, and that input can come from a human operator. It can come from a human operator with a remote control pack, and now it can come from a design file that is loaded into the brain inside this roof rack. Now look, this autonomy package is literally decades in the making, and it was really made possible primarily by three key moves within Caterpillar. Now, the first is the wealth of knowledge that the company has accumulated through the research and development of autonomous haul trucks for mining. The history of CAD autonomous mining trucks stretches all the way back to 1996 when the company unveiled the first autonomous haul truck at Mine Expo. Then in 2013, the company deployed the first six trucks to the field, and in the nine years since then, the fleet has grown to more than 500 autonomous trucks traveling mine sites across the world, and they have piled up 4 billion tons of material moved and more than 90 million miles traveled, all autonomously. Now, the next key development within Caterpillar that has really made automation possible occurred about 10 years ago when the decision was handed down to completely overhaul the electrical architecture within Caterpillar machines. Now, of course, this electrical architecture is a building block there. It's not like it was, you know, implemented just for autonomy 10 years ago. There were lots of other pressing issues such as, you know, electrohydraulic control, electrically controlled engines, trying to make these machines more efficient. But because that was done, this extremely progressive and modular wiring harness that is in the heart of modern cat machines, plugging in the autonomous brain or the remote control autonomous brain that sits on top of these new D3 machines was as simple as plugging in a connector. Now, the third and most recent development within Caterpillar that has made this layer of autonomy possible was the 2020 acquisition of Marble Robot. Now, Marble comes from a completely different part of the tech world than Caterpillar is coming from. They are actually a San Francisco based startup that was initially focused on developing delivery robots that are capable of navigating complex urban environments. Now, like those food delivery robots that Marble was developing, with this first semi-autonomous CTL, Caterpillar was really focused on simple operation in a complex environment, specifically load and carry in solar farm construction. Now, I've mentioned complex environments twice now and it's really important to kind of continue to hit that hit that nail on the head because you know look even though caterpillar had tons of experience literally uh, developing mining truck and autonomous mining truck technology, those trucks are traveling very different types of sites than a CTL that's driving itself would navigate. Yes, mining trucks are huge and yes they you know, have long distances to travel, and it's not like there's nobody on a mine site. But look, those roads are very kind of point A to point B. They're usually pretty large. They're usually not very congested. There's not a lot of people walking around on foot. And plus, the mining site itself that they are going across is restricted access. The typical construction site is very different from that. Now, is it as congested as an urban environment where people are coming and going and there's cars on the street and intersections and everything like that? No, it's not that complex. However, a CTL needs to be able to safely traverse that typical job site where there are people on foot. There are light vehicles and light pickup trucks along with other machines that are coming in and out. So look, even though Marble's initial focus could not have been further removed from construction applications, that technology's ability to safely traverse an urban environment, a much more complex environment than the typical working construction site, that allowed Caterpillar to make that acquisition and immediately kind of plug in the technology and allow its machines to, within a year or two, start safely traversing working job sites. And they do that through the combination of a use of LiDAR, cameras, and ultrasonic sensors. And it's all contained in this pin-on CAT command module on top of the 299 D3 CTL. And that package gives the machine 360 degrees of LiDAR and camera perception, basically allowing it to see and avoid objects and people in its environment. And by this point, you're probably wondering what the process of using this semi-autonomous CTL looks like. Well, like I said, this, this machine in particular has really been designed for a single purpose, and that's load and carry, and specifically load and carry on solar farm construction sites. And the reason that Caterpillar is kind of focused in on solar farm construction is that, you know, basically you've got a lot of materials and a lot of little areas to kind of prep. And once those areas are prepped, you kind of pick up materials, you take them you know, with, with forks, you take them to a new part of the site where those, need to, those materials need to be dropped off, and the next phase of construction begins. So you've basically got 
essentially a, a huge network of places where materials need to be deposited. And normally that would take a single CTL operator a ton of time to kind of orchestrate that. But with this technology, essentially, you do a site plan, a digital site plan. You load that up into the machine or machines because it actually is capable of running machines in tandem. The machine or machines that you're going to be using it with, and then you kind of send them out. And so Caterpillar says that this technology would actually allow one operator to program up, you know, five machines or more. When can you expect to see autonomous CTLs you know, driving themselves around job sites. Well, Caterpillar says that the brain atop this 299 D3 is a working prototype that apart from starring in cat promotional videos and, and this, this video as well, Caterpillar is right now just testing on select customer job sites. Now, Cat isn't saying just yet when they will bring the technology to market, but we'll be sure to let you know as soon as that happens. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this exclusive look at Caterpillar's 299D3 semi-autonomous compact track loader. Now, look, if you have any questions, be sure to drop us a line in the comments, and we will get back to you. And if you haven't already, follow us on all of our socials. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Awesome nights can't be contained. I got a lot